Hey folks, Dragon Keeper 9600 here. The latest episode of Transformers Robots in Disguise, Combiner Force, um, Breathing Room, that's the title, aired this morning, in the US this time. But unfortunately, nobody has uploaded it online yet, so to pass the time, we are going to watch more Micron Legend. Yay. This week's episode is called um, Strong Arm Shock, which is the reaction that didn't happen when Strong Arm found out that Sideswipe is a total mess. Um, <laughs> so, I pre-planned that joke. I hope you know that. Maybe I shouldn't have told you that. Anyway, um, once again, I finished my stick just as the opening is starting. Look, it's like badly pixelated too. They just like, like cut that out of the G1 title and then added that effect where it zooms in. Wow. I want to take this moment to once again remind everyone that this series aired on TV. <laughs> like, this is... That pixely shit was on Japanese TV. I mean, English version is full of flaws, and some of them the Japanese version doesn't have, but at least we didn't try that shit. Badly pixelated cute one title. Okay, so in this episode we're gonna meet new character Shockwave, who we kind of saw at the end of last episode, but weren't properly introduced to. And never will be, because Shockwave isn't a character who has much of a presence or personality or mind or reason for being here other than to be a toy. Actually be two toys, well, technically one, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, no word on if he enjoys logic or science in particular. He's really nothing like the G1 Shockwave. They just gave a, the name to a completely different character, which happens a lot in the Unicron Trilogy. Um, someone on my other YouTube channel, because on my other YouTube channel, I just post clips uh, from Micron Legend without commentary. Just clips, mine, not the whole episode. Some, one person pointed out how weird it was that in the Japanese version, two of the Destrons are named Ironhide and Sandstorm, which are, of course, names of Autobots in G1. And, like, the English dub does the same thing by having a Decepticon named Wheeljack. And, uh, I feel like there might be other examples. Oh yeah, and have Cyclonus be like, technically the same alignment, but have a much different personality and design and basically just be a different character with the same look. They do that all the time. <laughs> For some reason they thought opening with the Autobot shooting at the viewers would be good. This is how you find a war, you just stand here and shooting and don't do anything else. <laughs> at least they have a very pristine location that they're fighting in. Yep, that's Shockwave. All of that ship is Shockwave. <laughs> oh, size differences, you make me so happy. Not that they'll keep up portraying Shockwave as huge. He'll shrink quite a bit throughout the series. But that's the size he's supposed to be. Our ships will block out the sun and we shall hug in the shame. <laughs> Ironhide has slow reflexes. Oh wait, I don't know how to break on sand, help! The beach ate me. If you get that reference, then you're cool. Or you're really, really, really lame. One of those extremes. Strong Arm Admiral. That's his rank? Shockwave is an admiral? Or is that just like one of those like fancy nicknames? Like how everyone calls Megatron the Emperor of Destruction when he's not the Emperor of SHIT! You ain't worth SHIT! You're just like your father! I'm sorry. There's a planet called Debra. <laughs> Fucking Debra! <laughs> Japan, I don't know if you know this, but Debra is not an especially cool sounding name. Hi, Debbie. So you're a planet now. That's cool. I always knew you'd be one. Debbie! I saw you snarking down the Oreos at the band practice. Those were for the kids, Debra. Do people name their kids Debra anymore? Like, is there anyone who's named Debra who's under the age of 40? Come to me, Debras. I like how all the kids picked a pose and are sticking with it. I guess I kind of gave away the twist that Shockwave is the ship, because at least in the English job, they try to play it off like Tidal Wave is inside the ship before revealing that no, he actually is the ship. But whatever, you could have guessed that anyway. You see him transforming in the new opening! 
Hot, Hot Rod opened his mouth a few times because he couldn't remember his line. Yeah, that tiny little shot will work against that aircraft carrier that came down from the sky. <laughs> I like how his wheel and axle keep shooting as he's running. It's kind of cool. Yeah, you're confident now that your giant purple friend showed up. I love you. You love me. Never mind. I could participate in the battle, but I think hovering up here is much more helpful. Actually, considering he's a tactician, it might be. <laughs> nah, the Japanese version it gives away right away that Shaka was the actual ship. So, Hot Rod just kind of... Just kind of left to grab, I guess. Bye-bye. I fly! Oh yeah, so do I. Haven't used that in a while. You see how in this series they actually need Micron attachments to fly, whereas in Superlink they could just drive off into the air whenever they want? That's because Superlink is a stupid show. Some people like watch Superlink. It's like, I love this show. It's so nostalgic. And some people are like, it's not as bad as everyone says. It's like, no. No. Ah, uh, you don't know that? I mean, that's true, but you didn't know that. Ooh, that was a really well-drawn transformation sequence. You could actually see, like, the parts. Boot to the head! Oh, no. A hug. Holding a guy named Thrust in a tight embrace? Not something I'd do. Wait, he turned invisible. I gotta let him go now. I don't make the rules. Did you hear that? Instead of trying to hug Thrust. Again, not something you should do. Unless you're into that. <laughs> they can't fly, you stupid asshole. Oh, but but fucking uh, Thunder can just zip through the air like Superman. <laughs> nice water effect. It's good. Really, really good. Now it looks like they're underwater if you just have a wavy effect on the screen. That saved us a couple more thousand yen. I drink sake straight from the bottle. <laughs> So they got underneath him and flipped him like a turtle. I believe that's the same way the kids from It beat Pennywise. <laughs> that's never been used as a quip before. <laughs> He's so offended. Oh, that's not the same Micron that was with him a second ago. I high five myself. <laughs> oh, is that all? <laughs> kind of a tall order, Red. Three! At once! I just said that. Triple event. I need to constantly type to do anything on this computer. It's really not efficient at all. Do you know how for how many weeks I've had carpal tunnel? So obviously there's one that's right underneath the ship. I mean, you found two of the first three in the ship. Look at our dance! Eh? 
そっか動かないマークは本当にここを指してるんだわこの基地の<笑> Nice framing with the globe directly behind Lexus head Of course the position shifted in the next shot But the kids won't notice Yeah they will <sighs> My arms are stuck! I'm malfunctioning! Error! Error! Yes. Danger, Will Robinson! <laughs> Probably Red Alert should be. I mean, Ratchet should be doing this, but he's kind of a cripple. <laughs> And Ratchet's like, oh! This is not my fault, man! As opposed to the other, other cripples who their crippling is their fault. Never mind, this is already uncomfortable. <laughs> It's not your fault if you're disabled. Unless you're like that guy at like, that my dad represented once who like jumped into a lake that was like three feet deep. It is kind of that guy's fault he's disabled, but he's an outlier. <sighs> mm -hmm. That's a crack. It's Billy's legendary crack. So, haven't seen blue on a Micron panel before. Gee, Doubleface mentioned a new weapon before he left last episode. I wonder if that's relevant, seeing as the last special weapon also had different colored Micron panels. Why am I saying this out loud? You've already figured it out. Uh, sinking. That's what he's doing. I thought he'd be scary enough if they just leave. Nobody's ever tried to flip him before. They flip the bitch! Shockwave! Yeah, he's. Wow. This is a. This sea is really deep, like <laughs> 20 feet off the coast. It just goes straight down. Your kid gets pulled on by an undertow, that kid is just dead. <laughs> The buttons are really too big for me to be moving my fingers like this. Put it together, Alexa. Sandstorm! You missed another one! <laughs> the Megatron like throws Star Screen at Sandstorm. Ew. It's convenient that there's a monitor at Alexa's height. Lies! I didn't know the only thing you need to do to trick people into thinking you're not evil is just to say that you're not evil. Spide <laughs> <laughs> the kids are ace detectives. They can infer that two plus two equals fucking four. Shut up, Jim. Okay, in the English version, this was Fred's pretty much entire shtick throughout the whole show. Like every other line, like two thirds of his lines were him complaining that he either was hungry or asking when he was about to eat. Literally, that was his whole thing. Like, it's pretty bad. <laughs> like, if you're trying to be funny, you failed. If you're trying not to be fatphobic, you also failed. Though I don't think you were trying to be that. <laughs> well, since you asked, I think I'll go ahead and not tell you. No! Two-Face. Two-Face shall be dead. Oh! Oh, yeah! Sorry, that's the best I could come up with. What? I say we trust the mysterious ninja drifter who betrayed us. And betrayed the other side. You know... There was someone who said once that a dishonest man you can always count upon to be dishonest. <laughs> someone said that. <laughs> but we flipped him! 
That's basically like burning him and scattering the bases. I believe flipping was how um, Sherlock Holmes was able to snag Professor Moriarty. Just flipped him. Well, it's how Proud was able to snag all the tables in the office again. <laughs> I'm getting wet. <laughs> He's just standing there. Well, this is gonna wreak havoc on the ecosystem. The thermal pollution alone is astronomical. You know, we're supposed to be robots in disguise. In this day of satellite imagery, I feel like a giant fucking transforming robot aircraft carrier would be noticed by somebody. I don't know who they were. That's what Shockwave says most of the time. Just Shockwave. Hodor. You thought I was gonna make a Pokemon joke, but I went for Game of Thrones, a show I don't even watch. You know who really likes Game of Thrones? Most people. Also my dad. My dad really likes Game of Thrones. I think I'm the nerd of the family, but then my dad watches Game of Thrones. Or James Bond. And then I remember, it's genetic. <laughs> That is what spaceships do! That was obviously Jim! He's dead, Jim! I mean, you're dead, Jim! I think I broke my ass! Quoting his hero, Abe Vigoda. I found the thing we're looking for! What a shock! <laughs> Shut your mouth, you witch! That can't be true! Ow. I'm laughing! Ha 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 ha! seems to have no trouble hitting us from that distance. <laughs> Actually, I'm just not functioning! Help me! <laughs> You know, why weren't we doing this ahead of time? Was it really that important to have Optimus on the ground? Boom! And immediate <laughs> downgrade animation. You're used to that by now. Just kidding, you'll never get used to such things. At least you shouldn't. <laughs> that's a very, like, laser tag sounding blaster sound. I don't think that's the sound they've been using. Looks like Shockwave also wants to see the new Robots in Disguise episode. Shogarb is my favorite character! <laughs> oh! I'm pretty sure that's a stock sound effect. Where have I heard it? I've heard it in a video game. Maybe it was Harvest Moon. You know, I hear a lot of sound effects from Harvest Moon in cartoons. Like, I'm pretty sure I heard it in Ed and Hedy. <laughs> a sound effect from Harvest Moon, it's a, wonder a wonderful life once. It was weird. <laughs> MCA. <laughs> what was Wheelie doing there? Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you! Does he know English? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Jetfire's like, hey! That's a part of me you just dropped! Kill the crap out of him! 
You think your new toy is impressive? Our new toy can kick your new toy's ass because our new toy debuted sooner than your new toy. That's how it works. Every new character is always portrayed as like a total badass and then they're like they're not afterward. <sighs> hmm? The other two stopped activating. Look at this guy. He's basically just made of jets. He's not one jet, he's like five. <laughs> Yep. Microns, right where they left them. Still. He's got lips, though. He's not gonna snap and try to kill us, is he? <laughs> oh my god, he totally is! I'm sorry! <laughs> Maybe sending small children after the dangerous robots isn't a good idea. Microns don't want to fight, so they will shoot first and kill you so they don't have to fight. I don't have to fight him. I just have to kill him. Should we tell Shockwave, Shockwave that his name is not Star? <laughs> Running even though I can fly. He's just saying wave over and over. Pikachu. You think Shockwave has like an auxiliary brain, like a dinosaur to control his legs? Like, he might actually, there might be a separate computer controlling his legs. Just purely based on my own conjecture. Uh, yeah, he looks real dangerous right now. He's probably like crying, or he would if he could, and his face wasn't just permanently frozen. Two-parter? Two-parter. Yes. So, uh, that was episode 28. Strong Arm Shockwave. No, Strong Arm Shock. I already forgot the name of the episode. Anyway, um, yeah, two-parter. And this won't be the only two-parter in the series. Although later, the series will get, like, more serialized with each episode directly following the events of the former. But, um, that's not the case at this point. So these two episodes being this closely tied together is unusual. Um... I don't know why, like, even though it's only two episodes, whereas getting the other weapons um, took multiple, the Requiem Blaster is considered, like, presented as a bigger deal than the others. Just the way it's presented is, like... In previous episodes, it seemed like getting the Star Saber and the Cosmo Detector was just kind of an, un, um, an unforeseen consequence of what the characters were doing. This time, it seems to be very much the focus, and there's, like, this huge battle with the big threat shockwave, and... and um, it could be because the Requiem Blaster is the last weapon, or it could be because it's supposed to be the strongest of all of them, and I keep calling it the Requiem Blaster, which is the English term for the weapon, even though it's called, I think, the Astro Blaster, Micro Legend. Um, but anyway. By the way, Doubleface saying that he admires Alexa, super creepy. Like, mm, don't compliment the little girl, please. Like, it'd be fine if anyone but you did it. <sighs> anyway, folks, don't give it up. I am right here where I always am. No matter where I go, I'm always right here. Weird. He shoots from his chest some more. Haven't seen that yet. Looks like Ratchet goes on the field. <laughs> he spins it. This is not necessary. You're not linked. Just hold it up. Wait, the new Micron is named Apollo? Oh, I love it. That's actually a great name. <laughs> Spoilers, Alexa. Jesus. So, the next episode is... Utagoe. A song of sympathy. I was showing off my ability to read hiragana. Weeb. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, hopefully the new uh, Combiner Force episode will be uploaded soon because things were getting good in that series. But until then, this is Dragon Keeper 9600 signing off.